Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the board meeting. We're doing another reviews and ratings episode today where I review and rate all the different games I've been playing in the past few weeks with friends, family, and even solo. I'm going to give a quick overview, my review, and a final rating for each of these games. We have eight games on the docket to talk about today. We're going to start with my least favorite and proceed into my favorite games for the last few weeks. So let's start at the bottom. And the first game we're going to be talking about today is Channel One, which is a game that was actually designed and made by people from North Dakota. And I'm from North Dakota, and there's not a lot of games that come up from this uh, in this area. So I was kind of excited to check this one out. In this game, you are going to be playing as reporters. And at the start of each round, you're going to be drafting these cards. And you're going to be drafting source cards. You're going to be drafting location cards. And you're going to be drafting these ability cards that are going to give you some kind of action uh, to play those cards. Then after that, you are going to be placing out these cards on these different leads that are out there. And you're going to be placing out a location. Then you're going to be placing out sources on there. Or, yeah, fluff pieces on these different... Uh, leads that are out there. After that, anybody can take actions to close that, or you can continue to try and place out new new sources on them, and you're going to score points for certain types of sources that you're placing out on all these locations. If you close it, then you can no longer play these sources on there except for these other cards that are going to either get uh, an increase or decrease in each of these these stories that are getting put together. Uh, anyone who contributed to placing out sources or locations on these cards is going to score these points for each of these leads. The But this is a semi-cooperative game as well. At the end of each round, if certain stories weren't closed, you lose a star rating. And once if you lose all five star ratings in a game that's three rounds, you lose the game as a whole. Everybody loses. It's... A pretty simple game. This one's going to get a 5.5, unfortunately, from me. It's a semi-cooperative game. Semi-cooperative games usually never work. I can't think really of a semi-cooperative game, off the top of my head at least, that has worked, that I have really enjoyed. Um, besides the semi-cooperative part of this, the actual gameplay of itself just feels so bland to me. It's so boring to me. And that's unfortunate. Because I was kind of excited to check this one out just because, like I said, it was North Dakota. But it just didn't... It's not one that I wanted to come back to after two plays. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm kind of done with it. And after a play or two, you see everything that you need to see for the game. So yes, so 5.5 for Channel 1. Going to the next one. The next one is a dexterity game. This is Flick of Faith. This is a flicking game. And in this game, you are trying to flick these little discs onto these different islands that are on this this play mat. And at the end of each round, you're going to score one point for every island that you have presence on and two points that for any island that you have the majority for, if you've got the most pieces of yours on it. There are also these little circles on each of the islands. If you hit and you land on one of those circles, you could put basically put a building on, and that counts as one of your presence for each end of the round. At the start of the round, you are going to flip over these two cards that are going to change the game. And there, there's some kind of silly thing that's going to be happening in that round that is going to change the rules for that particular round. All the players are going to vote which one of these two new rules that they are going to implement. And at the end of the round, you just score points for, you know, like your island presence and uh, having the majority of presence on islands. This one's going to get a 6.5. I enjoyed it. I played this with my son and my girlfriend and my nephew a few times. But it's really, really fast. And the only sort of interesting part of this game is those rules that come out every single round. If it wasn't for those rules, I would probably really, really dislike this game. Because it's so simple that it's boring. The scoring is pretty boring in this. It's so basic and boring but the actual game itself, I enjoy the flicking dexterity part of this game, but I just wish there was more to this game. I wish it wasn't so simple and so broken down that I wish there was a little bit more going on. And you only have a few discs each round, so it, it goes really, really fast. I'm talking these games are like 20 minutes long. So yeah, 6.5 for Flick of Faith. Going to the next one. The next one is a Stonemeyer game. 
This is Pendulum. I put off playing this game for a very long time, and I finally decided I was going to play this game. And I needed to play it to make my ranking Stonemeyer Games video, which I made my last video, so check that out if you haven't. In this game, it is a worker placement game meets this real-time speed game. Uh, there are sand timers in this game. And on the action spots, you can place your worker on an action spot if there's no sand timer at that on that row. Once So you can place these out there, and then when a sand timer ends up flipping over and onto a spot that you have the workers, then you can activate those that action spot that you did. So you're going to be placing out workers, waiting for sand timers to flip over to that spot, then taking that action, and I, you're going to be doing this in order to get resources, in order to spend those resources to move up on these tracks. It is a track-moving game. At the end of the game, the player who has reached a certain mark on all of their different tracks that they've got wins the game. If multiple people have crossed that track at the end of the game, then you go whoever has gone furthest on those tracks, basically. This one is also going to get a 6.5. I really enjoy the element, the, the Euro-style element of this game, the worker placement aspect of it. The moving up those tracks, I think that's fun. The bad part is that real-time sand timer part of this game. It's really fiddly. You're constantly knocking down these sand timers. Like, you're flipping over these sand timers, and they're really thin. You're just constantly falling down. So if you're moving fast, you're like, oh, God, and then I knock over the sand timer. And also, these tracks that you are moving up on, they're not indented. So when you move up those tracks, you know, it's just on this sandpaper-style um, board that you have in front of you, you're moving fast. Several times throughout these games that I was playing, I hit these these boards that I had in front of me, and everything just went off. And I'm like, if you're going to have like a real-time game where it's a little bit chaotic, and you have tracks, you need to have those indented. So when you inevit inevitably hit those boards, they're not going to be shuffled around and discombobulated around the board. But yeah, uh, 6.5 for Pendulum. I really like some aspects, but that real-time part really hurts it. I would really like this game if it wasn't the real-time part, if it just took that part out of it. So yeah, 6.5. Going to the next game. The next game is Deep State. In this game, you are... It is sort of like this worker placement. You have these agents that you're placing out either on these spots for on these cards to try to get the cards, or you're placing them on these spots above the cards which are going to give you some kind of special ability. If you win the cards, the cards go to you, and those cards are going to have tags on them. At the end of each round, you're going to be able to complete certain objectives. You're going to need certain tags in order to complete most of these objectives. Those objectives are going to get you a lot of points in that manner. Also, if you move on these special tracks that are going to give you ability, abilities, if you go so far on those tracks, you're also going to score a ton of points that way. So there's a few different ways you can score points. This one's going to get a 7 rating. I enjoyed my plays of my play of it. I should say I only played it one, the one time so far. Um, I ended up buying this game for 5 bucks on Miniature Market, and my friend happened to see the same sale that was going on, and he bought it for 5 bucks. So now we both own this game, and for $5, this is a steal of a game. I think it's a little bit above average for a game. I enjoyed it. I will come back to it eventually a few times, but if I'm not going to enjoy it if I paid $50 for it. But for 5 bucks, it's a good deal all day long. And if I saw that for five, if you see this game for five bucks, go ahead and grab it because you might really enjoy this game. And for me, it was just a little bit like close to an average game for myself. So seven for a deep state. Going to the next game. The next game is, oddly enough, another flicking game. This is Table Golf Association. Now, this is a flicking golf game. In this game, you set up a hole and then you play the hole by flicking these little round plastic discs that have a marble inside of them and they roll and they roll very well and <laughs> this is a difficult game so you're going to be flicking these trying to get the the ball into the hole at the end of your each of your holes in there are different terrains in this there's like the rough there is sand there are water hazards and if you hit them in certain hazards you have to then flick your disc the ball 
in a different manner. You might have to hit it with your thumb on the other, your non-dominant hand, if you're in certain terrain. And this this is going to get a 7 rating. I really enjoy the game itself of this. It feels like golf in every manner. It feels like that rewarding sport that ex is extremely frustrating. When you hit a good shot, it is awesome. When you hit a, a bad shot, it is like I said, very frustrating. It is like golf. Why it's getting a 7 rating and not higher is for one reason. The setup. There is a lot of setup for each of these holes. So you're going to build your hole out and then you're going to play that hole. Then you have to take that apart and build another hole. Play that. Take that apart. Build another hole. And the fact is you are building holes more than you're playing the game itself. Because we were playing four player rounds of this and we'd play our, a hole in like two minutes. You take that apart and you're building a hole for the next four or five minutes. So there's more downtime to this game than actual playtime. And that's that's frustrating to me because of how much I actually enjoy the game. It's It's going to get a seven because the gameplay itself is like an eight to me. I really enjoy it. But that downside really hurts it to me. And in fact, people didn't want to continue playing a lot of times because they're like, we finish a couple holes and they're like, and we're like, should we keep going? And a couple people be like, nah, I don't want to wait around for you know that that long to keep playing it. So yeah, uh, seven rating for seven, seven rating for Table Golf Association. Going to the next game. The next game is Fractured Sky, and my friend bought the deluxe all-in pledge. For this game. It is an extremely high level production game. And I've only played this game one time. So I don't know how many more times I'm going to get to play it. Because I don't personally own it. So I'll review it now instead. In this game you are going to be placing out these ships. And these you then put a number underneath of either all of these ships. That are magnetized numbers. And nobody else can see that number. And you're going to be putting these these ships on these different spots. And at the end of the round, whoever has the highest number underneath these ships is going to win the rewards for these different spots if they have the, the highest numbers underneath them. And the rewards, the main thing you want to get is these star shards that are around the board. Because after so many rounds, I think it's five rounds, whoever's got the most star shards wins. If you... If you go to a spot and there's no star shards there, you're going to get the resources there. Say there is a star shard on a spot, though, and someone else beats you that you and you were at that spot, you're going to get the resources instead of the star shard. There are a couple of other things you can do on your turns. You can build out these fortresses, which are going to give your ships a little bit more power at adjacent locations. There are markets that are going to get you more resources when you're collecting resources at these different spots. Uh, this is a fun game. This is going to get a 7.5 rating from me. And I think the production and the magnets itself bring this game up like a half point. So it might be like a 7 without that those magnets and the production quality of this. But it's 7.5 because production quality and looks of the game matter to me. And this game looks great. It's colorful. It's fun. It's fast-paced. But it is extremely simple, so just know that. There's only a couple different rules in the game. Uh, I would say it's a gateway-style game. And it's it's fast-paced, it's fun. It reminds me of a game, Lockup, where you're placing out these workers and nobody knows what the strength of your workers are and whoever's got the highest strength gets the rewards for that. It feels like that, but a lighter lighter version of that. And I've, I've, I enjoy this game quite a bit. So yeah, 7.5 for Fractured Sky. Going to the next game. The next game is another Stonemaier game. This is Libertalia Winds of Galecrest, which is a remaking, re-theming sort of of the original Libertalia game. In this game, uh, someone is going to draw six cards, and these six cards that you have in your hand are going to be people and have different numbers on them. Then everybody else is going to grab those same people that you got. So everybody's got the same six cards in their hand at the start of the game. And simultaneously, everybody's going to pick one of these cards and lay it down. And then you reveal them, and whoever's got the lowest number character goes to the left. Whoever's got the highest number goes to the very right. So at the then at the start of the round, 
or at the start when you're activating characters, you start from the left and activate all the daytime abilities of all the characters going from left to right. After that, you activate all nighttime abilities or you, you take tiles from the characters from the right to the left. And you're taking these tiles that are going to be worth different amount of points. They're going to dif do different abilities. You're then going to do some nighttime abilities, which might score you some points in some manner. And you're going to, after you play a whole round of that, you're going to then get six more characters in your hand. You're still going to have a couple characters left in your hand from the round before. So everybody's going to get a little bit more asymmetrical throughout the game. Because you're not going to play certain characters where other people are going to play their characters. So you get a little bit more different as the game goes along. This game is going to get an 8 rating from me. I really like this game. And you, when you're placing, thinking about which characters you want to play each round, you're like, I want to play this character, but I want to go first in the special abilities part. But I also want to, you also want to go last because the last person gets the, gets to choose the tiles first and the tiles are going to be a huge point getter for you. So you're trying to de debate like what other characters, what other people are going to play for that. And if they're playing a character that might kill off another one of your characters, and you're, there's a lot to think about, but it's not a heavy game. It's a pretty light game. It's a very easy rules explanation. It's It got an 8 rating. I would say the only downfall to this game is it's a little bit mean. It can be a little bit mean. So when you play this game, just know you might get your characters killed a few different times or people are going to interrupt your plans. And you're like, oh, that ruined my turn. Just so you know, that is going to happen a few different times in this game. But I still had a ton of fun with Libertalia. So yep, 8 rating for Libertalia. Going to our last game we're talking about today, and that game is Sky Team. Sky Team is a two-player only cooperative game with no communication, basically. And in this game, one player plays as the pilot, one player plays as the co-pilot. This is a dice worker placement game where the pilot has certain objectives that they have to do that they have to accomplish before the end of the game. And the co-pilot has only has the same thing. They've got their own things that they have to do. And you're trying to work together. There are certain spots where only the pilot can play, play dice and the spots only the co-pilot can play dice. There are two spots where you have to play dice for each player each round. And that is going to control sort of the tilt of the plane and the speed of the plane for for these rounds. And there are lots of things that can make you lose this game. And there, there's basically only one way you can win this game is if you land at your airport. And there's there's a lot of things that can go wrong, especially since you can't be talking to the other player while you're placing out these dice. You can plan beforehand, but you can't plan once you roll the dice and see what you can actually do. This is a game, it's going to get an 8.5 rating. It reminds me of a game called Under Falling Skies, which was a solo-only game from a couple years ago that was really popular. I did a video with comparing that game to this game a few, few videos ago. So check that one off if you want a more detail of what's going on in this game. I really enjoyed this one. This is this is fun. It's simple. It's engaging. It keeps your intention that whole time, and it's nerve wracking because you're like, oh, I hope they don't 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 place a five there, or else we're going to lose. And the game is fast. I'm talking about twenty minutes, maybe, for each of the plays. And there are solo variants out there that work really well if you're interested in the solo play, rather than just the two player game. So yep, 8.5 for Sky Team, and that will complete this reviews and ratings episode. Make sure to comment down below some of your thoughts on some of these games. If you agree with me, if you don't, either way, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me, Shane, at the Board Meeting in the future. Hope you all have an amazing day. Take care.